So, in this video, we are going to be going through if I think it's worth playing Company of Heroes. And this is the first game which was released 18 years ago, at least on Steam it was. So we're talking a nearly two decade old game. But the reason I'm covering it now is because it's 70% off. You can grab this game on Steam for £2.99. You literally get the full game for £3. And what this game is, is it's an RTS. It's a real-time strategy game that's based in World War II. If you just grab the game on its own, you will get access to the Invasion of Normandy campaign. But then if you buy the complete pack, you're going to get the two DLCs, which are Tales of Valor and Opposing Fronts, which come with a bunch of extra campaigns to play. And on Steam, there are two versions of this game. You have Legacy Edition, which is just like the single player stuff. And then you have the Normal Edition, which comes with the ability to play multiplayer. And if you buy one of the editions, you get both. Like, basically, I bought the Normal one, and I got Legacy with it. And the Invasion of Normandy campaign starts you off, it's like D-Day. It's the very beginning, you're storming the beach, and your objective is to deal with some of the guns that are absolutely shredding your boats to pieces. And the way this game is set out, all of the controls, the layout, even the graphics for an 18-year-old game are phenomenal. The tutorial to teach you how to play is very in-depth. The tutorial took me around 40 minutes or so to go through. And then jumping into the campaign, like the mission after storming the beach, is like well over an hour. And you have to strategize, you have different difficulties and stuff you can play on. And I think one of the best things is this game is so old, but the control scheme for it and like the way they set it up is like it's basically really user friendly, very easy to get on with. And there are some functions in this game that you don't see even in modern RTS games. For an example, if you're pushing up with a squad of infantry and there are enemies in your like path to like basically your destination your troops are going to automatically start firing and they're going to get into cover as well. I've played some RTS games where you basically have to do one thing at a time. So if you're moving, you're moving. If you're going to cover, you're going to cover. If you're attacking enemies, you're attacking enemies. And I just think it's so good that this game lets you move towards cover while shooting enemies and your troops that you are controlling are not stupid. But at the same time, the enemies are not stupid in this game either. If you capture a point, they are going to come to try to take it back. And it's not just based on like strategic points, it's based on like munitions points and things like that as well. You have essentially three different, I'm going to say currencies you can use. You've got like your munitions, you've got fuel. And basically what these do is they are going to build up over time based on the sectors and stuff that you have control of. But it's not just about capturing sectors and getting extra resources so that you can call in extra troops and stuff. You are at some stages going to have your own headquarters, which is where you'll like basically summon some engineers, they can build up a barracks, and then you'll be able to deploy some riflemen from that barracks. So you have to work on little bits of base building at the same time, because not only that, when you capture a sector or like a strategic point, the enemies can come and just take it over straight away. So it's recommended to put an observation post on it because basically that makes the enemies have to destroy that observation post before they can take over that point. And then you also have like, sometimes the enemies are going to have like MG42 set up. They'll have mortar teams set up. And if you can manage to get a flank and you can take these like squads out, you can actually claim the weapons for yourself, which is something I remember being able to do in Men of War 2, which is a much more recent strategy game. So basically, to give you a, a better understanding of how that works, I have control of, say, paratroopers and there is a pack cannon. There's a load of vehicles going down a like set route throughout the map. So I would go to the pack cannons, I would get control of one of them, I would plant it somewhere and basically set up his line of sight. Vehicles come along, pack cannon takes them out, and then in the bushes, the other side of the road, like the far side of the road from where you are, there is a squad set up and they have a mortar. They're going to absolutely rip your infantry to pieces, but you push up on them, you take out the enemies, you grab the mortar for yourself, then you can set up and basically have mortar fire raining down on your enemies, providing they're not too far away. So you have little bits of base building, you've got control of squads, as I said, it's very easy to get on with. Then you've also got the strategy side of it, you've got to know when to push up, when to sit back. You can get your troops to retreat straight back to the headquarters. 
But on top of all of that, you can upgrade your troops as well. For an example, you can get just a basic squad of paratroopers and you can upgrade them so they carry recoilless rifles. And the biggest thing that stood out to me about this game is, with the gameplay being so good, there's cutscenes that are like well put together, and the game is 18 years old. Like, Granted, you have games like Men of War 2, there are other real-time strategies that do release. But you don't get many games that are made like Company of Heroes, the original Company of Heroes anymore. I mean, they have carried on, they've made Company of Heroes 2 and 3. All I've heard about Company of Heroes 3 is that it's absolutely nowhere near as good as many other RTS games. I don't know if the devs have worked on it and patched it and everything and made it a better experience, but when it first launched at least, all I was seeing was people basically shitting all over it saying it wasn't that good. Whereas Company of Heroes 1 on the other hand, I'm going to say this is one of the best RTS games to ever be made. And even to this day, 2024, 18 years later, the graphics are still pretty good. It feels as though if I was to go back 18 years and play this when it first came out, this game is one of those that you would class as being well ahead of its time so to answer the question is it worth playing company of heroes absolutely yes not only is it strategic you've got little bits of base building you've got your different squads you've got upgrades like there is so much to this game and a full-blown invasion of normandy campaign to play as well and then you've got dlc if you want extra campaigns you can play multiplayer there's still quite a few people playing this game in 24 hour peaks it's sitting at about 14 to 1500 players so if you're interested in this game i highly recommend grabbing it within the next day or two get it on sale for that 70 percent off and yes company of heroes is definitely worth playing and what we are going to do is leave that video there let me know your thoughts and stuff about this game in the comments and i'll see you guys in the next one i hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching